With the worldwide chip shortage throwing a damper into most manufacturer plans, we've been seeing fewer 3060 laptops than we'd have expected to. One of the more interesting ones to launch recently is the Redmi G, the 2021 Ryzen refresh. So how does this one fare? I mean, you can literally see the corners being cut, but are they really? Let's find out. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. From a build perspective, I love how the friends devoid of any branding. Almost feels like they didn't know if they were gonna sell this as a Redmi laptop or a Mi notebook or a Poco book and then decided, chuck it, no branding. Jokes apart, I'm a fan of the lack of branding. We have an X design here, which is subtle enough that you can get away with it in official settings. Maybe use it a lot more for productivity. At the same time, there's still a little something gamery to it. That said, the actual material used, I am not a fan. Not because it's polycarbonate, that's okay, it's a red knee, I did expect them to go function over form, but this happens to pick up a ton of smudges very easily. I don't know if they are trying to create a market so that they can sell their own microfi microfiber cloth or something, but it is what it is. On the flip side, there are a lot of vents to the bottom, to the left, to the right, back, and there is solid cooling inside. It keeps the temps well under control. Uh, we'll get to all that in a bit for now. Let's also take a look at the IO. The charging port is conveniently located to the back. I prefer this so, so much. You know, it helps keep the desk clean. And if you want to add an external display or ethernet, those ports also reside to the back alongside the charging port. BTW, this is HDMI 2.0, mini display port 1.4 and gigabit ethernet. Other placements include a USB 2.0 type A and 3.5 millimeter jack to the left, two USB type A 3.2 gen 2 ports and a type C port to the right. Now here's something interesting, this type C port can support power delivery up to 100 watts. So say you don't have your charger with you, you aren't really Yes, given it's only 100 watts and this laptop can need up to 230 watts, you can't just plug it in and use it as you always would, but you can still get some kind of charging going on. Hell, technically you should even be able to charge it with a power bank. I mean, you really shouldn't, but it is an option, right? Uh, I am very happy with the I.O. Next up, the weight. The Redmi G weighs in at two and a half kilograms and add to it that 230 watt charger, you're gonna be lugging around quite a lot. The bezels are still not the smallest and this aggressive styling, it might not be for everyone. Now, despite this weight, the battery capacity is 80 watt hours. It's not bad, but given the use of plastic and the weight, I would have, again, I mean, I would have liked to see a little more. Uh, but this is just me nitpicking because the battery life is pretty typical for a laptop of it, in its class. With regular work, you can uh, expect to get six to seven hours-ish with heavy gaming, a little over an hour, just like with most gaming laptops these days. Okay, now switching back to something I really enjoyed, Redmi's kept everything on this, on the inside, accessible. You just gotta remove 10 screws to the back. You know, one of them is a stealthy little one under this plastic, but remove them, back comes right off and you have access to everything, both RAM modules tucked away nicely underneath this metal housing. Uh, these are 8 gig 3200 megahertz sticks from Samsung. You can swap them to 32 if needed. Then there is Intel AX200 Wi-Fi uh, wi 6, there's Bluetooth 5.2. Uh, we have a 512 gig Hynix M.2 SSD. There's another slot that can be populated if, we, if needed. Uh, the read write speeds on this particular module is pretty decent. 3.5 gig uh, sequential reads, 3 gig sequential writes. Definitely not a bottleneck for gaming. Talking about gaming and performance, the 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 5800H pairs well with the NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU. Uh, the GPU, there are multiple TGP options for brands to go with. Uh, for example, uh, MSI in one of their laptops goes for 75 uh, watt TGP, I think the GS65 Slim. Uh, but Redmi here has go gone all in. This has the max 130 watts, which is great from a performance perspective. Now this is Horizon Zero Dawn and we're getting 70 to 80 FPS with everything on Ultra. So, you know, the performance is pretty sweet. Now with Cyberpunk 2077, with ray tracing ultra preset, we only get 20-ish FPS. Drop that down to just ultra and you get 50 to 60 FPS, which is pretty solid for Cyberpunk 2077. If you wanna up that FPS given this is a 144 hertz display after all, then at low, you still don't max it out, but you get well over 100 frames per second. Talking about the display, this here is a 16.1 inch full HD LCD panel uh, with a 144 hertz refresh. The brightness goes up to 300 nits. 
Uh, and with this matte finish, it's pretty usable everywhere. Of course, coming to this right after testing the much more expensive Aero 15 OLED, I did miss the OLED. But this is a pretty stellar display in its own right. And talking about the Aero, the hinge here is much, much better. You would have seen so far it hasn't really wobbled and it, does, it doesn't wobble. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty rigid uh, and uh, they've really done quite well. You can even open it up with a single finger. So uh, they've, they've nailed that part. Now coming back to the games, this is Forza Horizon 4 at Ultra. 120, 130 FPS constant, plenty smooth. I loved gaming on this laptop. Uh, the performance and refresh part at least, because the audio, not so much. Redmi does market Dolby this and that. This Pika output though is just okay. At times, uh, if the fans are running full throttle, I had trouble hearing some dialogue clearly. But for the most part, it gets the job done. Talking about fan noise, it can get quite loud while gaming. It's a 130 watt, 3060 after all. Uh, but if you want to do just mundane day-to-day -day stuff like watching videos in whatever, it can run quite silent. Uh, BT Dub, even when run full throttle, the Redmi G doesn't get uncomfortably hot. The area above the keyboard does get quite uh, toasty, but the keyboard itself is okay. The trackpad is super cool. So I'd say they've done a decent job with thermals. Moving on, by default, this laptop comes with the Chinese uh, single language Windows 10 Home preloaded. Wiping it and installing Windows 10 Home or 11 uh, retains the activation. So you really don't have to deal with uh, Chinese anything on this laptop. Even this one app, Gbox, which I have installed, uh, it's got the three silent balanced and turbo options. You can even choose to uninstall it or rather not install it at all and switch between the three modes using Control K shortcut. So everything works great after reinstallation. You don't have to deal with Xiaomi or Redmi anything. The keyboard layout is pretty spacious. There's reasonably good key travel. The inclusion of full-sized arrow keys and a dedicated numpad, I mean, makes it a winner in my book. And these keys are backlit. You can toggle between off, low, and high. I do wish Redmi had a fingerprint scanner somewhere. Now that, that would have been cool. The glass trackpad is pretty large with Windows Precision drivers. It's very smooth, gesture inputs. The general usage was enjoyable. So this is the webcam, 720p, reasonably good. Nothing too special, but hey, uh, at least it's not present in an awkward position. And it's, uh, I don't have any extra lights or anything. This is just a normal setup. And I think it's fine. Okay, okay, enough with everything else. Back to performance. With lighted idols like Hong Kong Massacre or CSGO, hitting well over 144 FPS is possible with all the settings maxed out. And of course, we aren't done till we are done testing emulation, right? So this year is Nintendo Switch title running via Yuzu. Smooth 60 FPS, nothing to complain. Enough PS3, Demon Souls via RPC S3, smooth as butter again. This laptop is amazing for emulation. So what do we have so far? Build, I'm gonna rate it good. IO, display, performance, I'm gonna rate it very good. Usability with a keyboard, touchpad, Wi-Fi and so on, still very good. Battery, I'm gonna call it average. And then there's price. Now this is what I'm gonna call exceptional. Redmi's got this one priced at $69.99, which converts to about $1,100 or a little over 80,000 rupees. I feel that's one hell of a price point they've hit. Now, if you look at 5800H and 3060 combos, they're usually priced a lot higher. The only thing that comes close, I, if I can recall correctly, is the Acer Nitro 5. Even that sells for around $1,500. Uh, the rest are priced around or over the $2,000 mark. Now, of course, you can't compare the Redmi G to something like, say, the Legion 5 Pro, because it's not just the CPU-GPU combo that you're paying for, right? Some of the more expensive models have better screen resolution, refresh, HDR, G-Sync, a lot more storage and so on. But if you're just looking for that price to performance, as always, Redmi delivers. At 1100 USD, this combination of the 5800H and 3060 is pretty much unbeatable. But then again, it is also pretty much unbuyable. You know, for the moment, it's all, hey, Redmi is doing something pretty cool and I hope it, they bring it to other markets. Uh, and that to me was still worth doing a video for because I feel this is very, very interesting. Uh, and I wanted to just share my experience with Redmi G 2021. So what do you guys think? Would you like to see Redmi bring this out of China? Or do you think there's something better that I've kind of missed? Leave a comment down below. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down, based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. 
And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.